So first it was reported by YouTuber Jonathan, leaked over there, and then, of course, it was also confirmed by Jason Schreier, who had reported about some of these aspects on Bloomberg before, that the next Assassin's Creed game would be AC Mirage. Now, we didn't know how much of this was true, how much of it was false, but since we recorded this, Ubisoft themselves on Twitter actually did confirm Mirage's existence, and we're going to be learning about it in less than a week, supposedly on the 10th. So we wanted to talk about it today, but if any of the verbiage or tenses sound odd, I did my best to edit it. We recorded this in between the Schreier and Jonathan story and Ubisoft confirming its existence, but we didn't want to re-record the whole thing because it wouldn't really add anything because a lot of it still leaks. So we're going to take a look at what we want to see, what we think about it, and then of course we will come back and talk about this again after we find out more in the next few days. So I hope you enjoy this. If you do, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let's hop into it. Nate is here with me today. If you don't know Nate because he hasn't been on the channel for a little bit, he is always on the Let's Play channel. We actually are going to be starting Assassin's Creed Brotherhood soon over there. So I want to shout out the Let's Play channel here real quick because we've been having a super fun time on a lot of games there. Assassin's Creed is going to be there and We happen to be talking about it today, so link in the description down below for that Degenerate Plays. But here's the thing with Assassin's Creed. We've been saying for a while, both of us have been saying, why can't they do both? And what we mean by that is, why can't they actually just make their RPG games that there are tons of fans of, Mm -hmm. their original games that there are tons of fans of, and then tie them loosely together, but not so tightly together that you need to play both if you dislike one style. And if you love both, then everyone wins, because you make both. We've been saying this for a while, and it's possible that Ubisoft is finally listening. Jason Schreier went through that video and started talking about some of it, and said, a person familiar tells me parts of this new Assassin's Creed leak are true, such as the name and stuff Bloomberg already reported, such as it's coming out in spring of 2023, it's set in Baghdad, and will bring Assassin's Creed back to the basics, but other parts are not, which we'll talk about here. So I kind of wanted to run through this list with you, Uh, See what you think. And we're talking about kind of what we think about it, what we would like to see. Which, I mean, the word mirage is uh, related to the desert. Right. I mean, if you're stuck in the desert, you start seeing stuff. So, like, maybe that's something surrounding it. I don't know. Well, can I point out, too, with this, that spoiler alert here. I'm not going to say the exact spoiler because I don't want to if someone hasn't played Valhalla. But there is a direct connection between Basim, who is supposedly going to be the lead of this game, yeah. and Valhalla. Mm-hmm. This originally was reported to have started out as a DLC add-on to Valhalla. Jason Schreier confirmed that part, or at least talked about it on Bloomberg um, in an article. And with that, there is a connection between Mirages and the deity Loki. Right. was highly tied into Valhalla. Right. So it could be something to do with that, too. We don't really know. Yeah, and if that's the case, fine. I'm fine with it. So the next thing we wanted to talk about here with this is that, yeah, like, it'll su- reportedly take place in Baghdad, which neither of us are history majors on Baghdad on the Middle East. But it's interesting to note that this will be the most similar to Assassin's Creed 1, according to not only this setting, but other parts of this leak. However... Part of this leak was that there will be multiple cities to explore, and Jason Schreier said there won't be. Right. I want to know what you think about that. Would you want there to be? Would you not want there to be? I guess it depends on how big Baghdad is, because Baghdad is a pretty big city, both in ancient history and in, well, modern times. So I guess before George W. Bush took care of it, but it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> well, it's kind of a... We hope there's no modern day segments. <laughs> right. Modern day segments in Baghdad might not be the best. Right. But anyway, so I think it's a big enough city and an important enough city in ancient history that you could actually put a lot of stuff into this game. Mm-hmm. So to me... If they, if they pack the city of Baghdad with enough stuff, I don't need multiple cities. No. It's like Assassin's Creed Unity. Paris was big enough. We didn't need anything else. Right. Like, did you really need to travel, like, to London or some random place like that? No. No. Paris is fine. It was big enough. I agree with that. I do want to say, in that vein, though, I also do think that removing the kingdom yeah. or the mountain path in Assassin's Creed 2 or even the frontier in mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed 3... When you didn't have that kind of stuff for a while in Assassin's Creed, and you pointed out it is back in the RPGs because the areas are so big. Right. Like, you can leave a city and kind of go outside and go somewhere else. Um, But when you remove that stuff, 
I do sometimes feel like it gets a little disjointed. If you were to just have it be one city, you do really have to make sure that's fleshed out. Because one thing I did like a lot about Assassin's Creed 1, 2, and 3, specifically all of those, was that the areas to me between the cities felt like a real area that you were traveling to get to the city. Right. But especially as Connor, I think they did it almost the best in 3. I know this is an unpopular opinion. I love the Frontier. Oh, yeah, the Frontier is great. I love being able to go around, talk to NPCs there, get quests, build up the homestead that was mm-hmm. on the other side of the Frontier. You'd leave cities and go over the homestead. You'd recruit NPCs to your homestead. You'd be able to talk to them. You'd go on hunts. You'd do different things like that. Four did this same thing, but they used the sea. Yeah. You know, when you do that kind of stuff, I think you make the world feel very big and flowing. So I think that if they can redo that feeling that they did in those specific numbered games, Mm -hmm. because I think all the numbered games did it well, I would love to see multiple cities back. But if they're not here and Baghdad's really fleshed out, I don't care. Right. If that was a, sorry if that was a long story short thing, because I liked the in-between areas. I really miss the frontier, man. Yeah, the frontier was was great. The frontier is, the frontier hit different. Yeah. You know, when you're in the hustle and bustle of New York and Boston in that game, it was nice just to go in the woods yeah, and just like hunt, you know, bunnies or something well, like that. One, it was kind of cool. One thing I love about it is it establishes Connor too. Yeah. Like it very much shows this man living in two worlds. Right. I thought the frontier really showed that and it showed like the dichotomy between that. Just like with Edward getting off uh, the boat onto onto ground and doing assassin stuff. Right. Melded together with his life on the seas as just a pirate. Right. You know, I like that stuff a lot. If they can do something like that here, I'd love to see it. Speaking of dichotomies, one thing I want to talk about is Bassem himself, because you're supposedly going to play as him in his youth. This was in the Jonathan report. We don't know about this confirmed by Jason Schreier or not. Mm-hmm. We know the Bassem thing is supposedly real. But in his youth as a thief until he arrived at the Hidden Ones. This worries me a little bit because I don't want to play as a guy up to becoming an assassin. You know what people like about Bassam? He's a cool assassin. You know what people don't care about? Let's play as a whole game of Bassam before he's an assassin. Well, yeah, and it's like, what what are you even going to do? Steal. Like, okay. He's a thief. Wow, cool, awesome, fun. Well, I'm assuming... (laughs) and, And that's the thing is I'm assuming it would be... He would still be doing assassin stuff if they mean this like AC two. Well, yeah, and that's the, yeah, exactly. If they do it something like AC two, it's fine because he technically wasn't right. an assassin. Like people wanted to argue with mm-hmm. us on this. Right. He was an assassin in terms of he was doing stuff for the Brotherhood, but he didn't know about it until near right. the end of the game, well, and that's where he he was officially inducted. Well, and I would be fine with something like let's say it's a ten sequence game. I'm just throwing a number out there. I'm right. fine with like the first two sequences of just playing as Bassam. But maybe in, like, sequence three, he gets recruited by the Hidden Ones. Right. Something like that. Gets his robes and stuff. Yeah, like, I'm fine with that. Yeah. But, like, I don't want to play as a whole game as just Bassam the Youth Thief. Right. That's 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 kind of... That's not interesting. Like, I'm sorry. It's just not. And that's why when I read that, I was kind of like, I hope that's not true. Or it's at least being stated wrong or, like, not fully fleshed out. I did want to ask you, by the way, on that note with sequences, I don't think this was mentioned here, but... They did mention the game will return to basics with inspiration from the original Assassin's Creed. And I want to talk about that with you for a few minutes. But do you want them to go back to replaying sequences? Because I don't I don't want full sync. I don't want no, that. No. But I would love the ability to go back and replay missions again as easily as it was in the original games. Yeah, that's something I was always sad about that left, actually. I mean, there's something nice about just beating the game. You know, you play through the game, you beat it and whatnot. But... So that was something that was very unique to me about Assassin's Creed is that the game's broken up into sequences. Mm-hmm. It actually felt like when you were playing through a game, it felt like you were actually in the Animus because that's that's kind of what a sequence is. A sequence is literally just you're in the Animus. This part of the Animus we're going to end. Let's skip ahead to the next part. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you're playing through a game like Valhalla or something like that, it's just one continuous story. I'm fine with it. Like, I had no problems with it, but there is something nice about the sequences. So, yeah, I do wish it would return. One thing that was reported was RPG elements. A lot of them will be removed. This is something I think a lot of people on this channel will be happy about because no matter how much I say I enjoy the RPG games, I would say three-fourths of the people who follow my channel that like Assassin's Creed far preferred the original. I love both. You love both. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a lot of people that would be excited about this part because 
of no more dialogue choices, no gender choice, and no more leveling system. Now, I don't think anyone cares about the gender choice. I actually think it's cool when they provide that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And when it's Basim, they can't. Well, yeah, because it's an established person. Right. I would love to see it in another game that's not even an RPG game. It's like an established, uh, or not an established person we've met, but like maybe a different assassin you choose if they're a man or a woman or whatever. Yeah. Um, But I don't really care either because we've also gotten three or two games now in a row where you can do that easily. Mm -hmm. Um, It is odd to me, though, not to be like weirdly social justice-y, but it is odd to me how they often push the male characters in this series. Yeah. It's something I want to make a video on and talk about eventually because, like, they marketed Alexios. They did not market uh, Cassandra. Yeah. They marketed uh, male, you know, the male Ivor. I always say Avor, but I think it's pronounced Ivor. Well, <laughs> you, so, you do whatever you want. You call Avatar <laughs> right. the last airbender in anime. That's so true. Let's start an I, argument over I that. do my own thing. Exactly. Like. A rebel. I guess to me, that's interesting. I just want there to be a healthy amount of male and female assassins. Yeah. I, I don't care what game it is. I don't care what you do, but like. Just make both, and I'm happy. In terms of, like, the no more dialogue choices, you were actually happy about that. Yeah, and I, I was very happy about that, because to me, I when I'm playing an Assassin's Creed game, I don't want to make a dialogue moral choice. Like, no. I don't care. I just want to learn the story of this character. But you constantly made that choice to sleep with Ivor's wife. Well, there is that. Yeah. So that's fine. And bang on the desk. That's fine. Right. But You want that choice. Yeah, I want that choice, but I don't want, like, a choice that's, like... Because my problem with dialogue choices is some games are fine. Like, if I'm playing Fallout, fine. I'm fine oh, with I it in, in New Vegas. Great. Yeah. But if I'm playing, like, the story of Cassandra, I don't want to be looking up every five seconds, like, what choice is this going to make to the ending of the story? So it's like your choices matter. And I guess for me, when I'm playing Assassin's Creed, I just want to, like, play the game because Assassin's Creed, you're playing as as an assassin or a character, and essentially the story of that character is their story is already established. That's the point. Right. Because you're playing as a modern day person going back in time. So that person is not like making five different character choices. They're just making the choice that they already made. You're technically just observing it. I mean, that's the technical aspect of Assassin's Creed. So you're saying if they were to do this, you wouldn't want there to be a modern day element in that game. Right, you I would mean, want exactly, because it be... it's, uh, yeah, to me, I just never liked the dialogue choices. I always thought a lot of your choices were in the killing. Yeah. That's what I don't like about Full Sync. Right. Is, like, your choices exactly. are in gameplay. Yep. Because, like, it doesn't really matter if Altair stabbed him in the dick or if Altair stabbed him in the leg if he died either way. Right. What matters and, and, is yeah. Altair killed him. Yeah, unless history tells you one way. Like, if history says, this guy was stabbed in the dick, then obviously, like, if you stab him in the face, then it wouldn't make sense. Right. But, but like, I think that it's interesting how they kind of, they moved away from that to force you to even play them specific ways yeah. of full sync. Yeah. And now they've moved so far the opposite way where it's like, do whatever you want. Well, yeah. And like, they give you four different options and it's like, why are we doing this? The gender choice, I'm fine with it coming back if it does a change. Assassin's Creed Syndicate, you have the twins, mm-hmm. the, the the Fry twins. If they would do something in the future where like, let's say you you can either pick Jacob or Evie Fry to play as your main character, but both characters followed a uh, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep style where both characters are different characters and they follow a different story. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think that's a good way to do gender choices is because it makes you go back to the game more. Well, there's the question right there. There's the million dollar question. Don't you think, I'm sorry, not to ask you a leading question, but I think I know your answer. Don't you think that with Cassandra and with Well, especially Cassandra, I'm going to do that one specifically. There would be nothing lost if there was no choice to play as Alexios. No, absolutely not. Maybe sales, though. That's what sucks is I think Ubisoft, in my opinion, thinks that if it's not a male-led game, it won't sell. Right. I think that's why they always, like, if you look at the covers, it's always a male. Right. So I think that's mainly what it is. But, like, in terms of story, they often basically consider Cassandra to be the canon one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's why I think you would eliminate that. You would, you know, because now Cassandra is the main character. I mean, that's the canon character. She came back in Valhalla. Right. If you play as Alexios, which I did, unfortunately, I followed their advice. If you play as Alexios, the game doesn't really make sense a lot of times. I mean, it kind of does, but it's obvious that Cassandra is the main character. Right. So for me, if you're wanting to play the canon story, what's the point of playing as Alexios? There's no point. 
if you do my way, you would give you a point to both characters. That way you're eliminating the whole gender choice of any kind. It's just, well, both of these characters matter. Well, and that's what's interesting about this is because they would move away from that and it just is Bassum. Yeah. You don't even have to worry about that right, at Right, exactly. So. And moving into some other stuff here, what do you think about no leveling system, if that's true? Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with it. I'm fine with no leveling system. I mean, the original style was fine where you kind of leveled up as you went along with leveling up as in terms of getting new weaponry and getting new gear and stuff like that, new assassination techniques or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that method too. I don't really need the level system. I mean, level system's fine, mm -hmm. but the original style's also fine Would too. you prefer to have that back for a game where you could just kill someone? If we're in the original style of Assassin's Creed, then I would prefer not to have a level system. Yeah. I kind of like the, I kind of like the idea of you being an assassin, maybe you're learning new techniques as you go throughout the game to be better. Mm -hmm. So then by the end of the game, you're a much better assassin. The Eagle Vision is supposedly back, so is the drone bird. I don't think either of us cares about this. You thought the bird was cool. The bird's cool. The bird's I'm cool. I'm also fine with Eagle Vision. And no one cares if... I don't think anyone's like, the bird, please! No, you know, like, I'm we fine with it. both. I'm fine with both. What do you think about this? Bassam will be able to use the string dagger to eliminate his opponents. I mean, this one's interesting. I guess I will say I don't know the history behind the string dagger, so I don't have an opinion on that aspect of it. However, just a functionality of it, I'm okay with it because maybe it's maybe it's a unique weapon to Bassum, mm -hmm. like something like the that, hook blade. Yeah, something we haven't seen yet, right? Or the cane sword was to Jacob Fry and Evie Fry. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just something we haven't really seen yet, so maybe it'd be kind of fun to to play as that. So I, I don't know. I'm okay with it. I don't want to talk too much about this one because it's a straight up spoiler for yeah. the for the game. So I'm gonna block this one out on the list. You can look up the list if you want. Right. Um. But. There is one of how it will tie into Loki right. um, himself, who is mentioned in Valhalla, who has a part in Valhalla, yeah. because those gods have parts in Valhalla and tie into it, and obviously Basim ties into Valhalla. Right. So I don't want to get into the specifics of that, but that would be interesting. This is possibly my most interesting thing to This me. is the one I don't believe. And this is well, the one I don't believe either. I don't believe this. Ubisoft is secretly preparing the remake of Assassin's Creed 1 based on Rift and Mirage's work, and they will reuse a large part of the assets. However, they did point out a, a way for Ubisoft to be lazy here right. and reuse <laughs> assets, so part of me does believe it now. Right. They're like, Ubisoft will do this cool thing. We're both like, I don't know. And they'll be lazy about it. That's oh, probably hey, true. Right. It's probably true then. They can cut corners, yeah. I don't know. I don't know about that because... Well, Here's here's the other part of it, that it would be, well, they say it should be integrated. I think they right. meant would be integrated into a season pass, which will include <sighs> DLC in Constantinople when Bassem meets Sigurd. It yeah. will be released a few months later on, which this sucks because that's not going to be on disc. So that right. means that means that with all the problems Ubisoft is having right now with like online connections and stuff like that, this remake might eventually become unavailable if it's digital only. Right. I'm just saying as a game preservation person who cares about that, I don't like that. That does sound like some shitty thing they'd do. But in terms of the remake, people have been asking for the remake forever. And do you really think they'd just throw it in? No. It seems like they'd want to make money off of it. Well, and the thing that's interesting about this is when Assassin's Creed Odyssey came out. Mm -hmm. I believe it was Odyssey and not Origins. It was one of the two. I could be wrong. They actually, they advertised Assassin's Creed 3 remaster... Yeah. As part of the season pass, which I was pissed off about because they never said it was going to be physical. They just said, yeah, we're going to get the remaster of Assassin's Creed 3 on the season pass. And I was like, oh, cool. I mean, I'm buying the season pass anyway, so I'll buy this. So I bought it, which, I, you know, is just included in the season pass price. So it's not like I was gouged out of it. Right. You weren't like cheated, but right, it's still exactly. And, and then they released it physically. So for me, if they're planning on doing this for the season pass, I could see something similar where they're advertising... Like, oh, the AC1 remake, here it is on the season pass, and then just releasing it physically later on. It's just a way to sell the season pass. Right. We're talking about Ubisoft here. They will right. do it. No, and, so. and I agree with you. It's just part of me wonders if they'd even want to sell it as the season pass originally because the future is moving more and more digital, even though you and I are fossils and we are not. Right. And I would say we're the right people. We're, we're in the right, always. Exactly. Morally, figuratively, <laughs> exactly. everything. No, but, you know, for me, it kind of seems like this. If you're Ubisoft, 
Now, sadly, I'm saying, like, if you're Ubisoft, wouldn't you make the right decision or wouldn't you make a smart business decision? So maybe not. (laughs) But if you're Ubisoft, wouldn't you be like, okay, fans have been complaining to us. They want the original thing forever. They probably call it whining because they get mad about um, having to listen, I'm sure. And like, okay, well, if they want the original style and we bring back this Bassam game, why the hell would we include a whole other game for free with that? Why wouldn't we also sell that? Right. Like, why why wouldn't you want to sell that as a standalone thing? I understand if you're saying, like, $40 for the season pass, that's what it usually is. But come on. You really think that it, that, that, that will be cost effective? A whole remake of Assassin's Creed 1 for $40 plus the season pass DLC? Right. I mean, if it was just that... I could believe it. Mm -hmm. But the season pass is also going to include whatever we need for Mirage, the Bassam game. Right. You know that they'll add stuff in. So that's kind of, to me, where it becomes a little unbelievable because I'm wondering if they're trying to bring back original people, why they wouldn't price gouge them. It's so sad for me to say that, but that just seems like a thing they do. Yeah, well, and the other thing that I'm pissed off about the AC1 remake, or even a remaster, I'm fine with even a remaster, like a physical remaster of it, is this is the only game they haven't technically physically released in a remastered form. Right. If you wanted to play this game, the Xbox has, you know, upgraded it with new graphics and better FPS and stuff like that. Yeah. But you have to buy the original uh, Xbox 360 disc to play it. But I'm saying if you wanted it physically. Oh, oh, If you wanted it physically, you have to buy the original Xbox 360 disc. Yes, I agree with you. Every other game has been brought up at least to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One era. Well, and what's weird is you have options. Like, it doesn't run as well, technically. Um, There's some things that actually look better, some that look worse, but the Ezio Trilogy? Yeah. Those games are backwards compatible, by the way. Right. So, like, you can play, but I mean even just standalone. You can buy a disc of two. Yeah. Put it in and play it on the Series X. You right. You can buy a disc exactly. of Brotherhood. Yeah. But those other games, you have options for them. And with that one, it's weird because there's one option... You get the original, and you get it, and you're going to like it. If you're on PlayStation, good luck. It's just what it is. Yeah. And if you're on Xbox, it's improved, and that's it. So there's a whole console family of people. Right. I guess Nintendo and PlayStation who have access to most of the other games. Nintendo now has access to the Ezio Trilogy Mm -hmm. and 3 and 4 and stuff like that, and Rogue even, but they don't have access to one. Not easily. Yeah, and, and I don't get that. So that's why with the AC1 remake... I'm fine with the remake. Look, like, please release this. I want to own this game, mm-hmm. but this should be a standalone thing, and it should be physically, not some season pass thing, because we've already seen Ubisoft is just going to remove digital content years later. Well, and that's what I They're worry just gonna about. Do. Yeah, so yeah. that's why it's like, take this off of the season pass. If it's true, put it physically so we have the game. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't really have anything else to add to the DLC. The Constantinople stuff, if that's true, I'm fine with that. I mean, he meets Sigurd, who's Eivor's brother in uh, Valhalla. I'm fine with that. It doesn't I, sound I'm, necessary, no, it but it doesn't it's really fine. sound necessary. No. It, it, you know, it sounds like a piece of story that I'm fine with it existing. I don't know. I'm interested to see what happens with this. In terms of me, what I think is probably true on this, I could see the title, the release date... The Baghdad stuff, Bassem, obviously. When it comes down to the rest of the stuff, I think it would be a return to basics for this kind of thing. Um, but the rest of it, I'm just unsure of. The AC1 remake, I want to be proven wrong. So if yeah. it comes out, I would love for for like Ubisoft to dunk on me and be like, see, we did it. Mm-hmm. Please sure. do. Yeah. But I don't expect it. Let us know anything in the comments down below. Please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content. We appreciate you very, very much. Over 112,000 subs. There's going to be more Assassin's Creed stuff, more, obviously, Batman, DC stuff. We're going to be doing more Fallout and a lot of other things, so we hope to see you there. And as always, everyone, stay shway.